This is the second video tutorial on how to use our uh, climate software packages. Um, I'm using here Climate EU as an example, but we have uh, other packages for other regions of the world as well. Um, <clears throat> this one will be a little bit more advanced. We'll deal with projected uh, climate surfaces and um, uh, show you what that looks like. Um, the difference between a geographic where you have the longitude and the latitude being straight lines and the projected is that you have better area representation. So a pixel up here has the same actual size as a pixel down here. And you can see that this is a better representation of how Europe really looks like. Um, that has some implications if you are doing modeling with the climate surfaces that we are generating. Then you can see you waste a lot of effort here on uh, you know, creating really high resolution uh, predictions for the north. And, uh, you know, overall you can see visually that you can essentially cut your modeling effort by half by using a projected uh, coordinate system. Um, <clears throat> that involves a few more steps, but I think it's, uh, you know, it's worthwhile to uh, do this little exercise in the beginning. It'll save you tons of time later on. Um, so this is what we'll do. We will create uh, climate surfaces from a digital elevation model. And uh, we'll do that for you know, two periods, for a future projection and for current climate and for multiple variables. I think we'll do about 20 variables. And I think we're going to do this at fairly high resolution, maybe a kilometer or so for Europe, for the whole continent. Um, what you'll need is uh, the software packages, which you can download at the University of Alberta and at the University of British Columbia. That's a collaborative effort. Um, you need R, um, and that's an open source programming environment, so you can just get that for free at this website. And then you need some sort of GIS I use uh, S3 ArcGIS because it's free to me, but if it's not free to you, you might want to spring for some sort of open source solution there as well. And uh, just as a reference, uh, this is my website here. So before we get started, um, I should give a warning for users located in continental Europe. Uh, this software is not working with uh, commas as decimal points. So what you have to do is change this to change your settings to uh, English Canada or English US, just for the for the way that numbers uh, and dates are uh, displayed. So you go to the control panel, and then there's a clock, language, region, setting, and then time, date, number format. And then you just uh, uh, change this here. That's how it looks on Windows 7. Okay, so let's uh, uh, start with the process. And I prepared a, a directory here. There are already a couple of things in there. One is the uh, program, the downloaded program. That's how it looks like, looks like when you unzip it. There should be three data folders and the program itself. You can just double click it to run it. Um, and then what else we have? We have some uh, GIS stuff. So I, I did get a, a 2.5 kilometer resolution Albers projected um, model. And I like the ASCII format simply because it's text-based uh, <clears throat> and you know it's it's a bit of a waste of bytes here, but we can easily handle that. Um, I choose the 2,500 meter resolution one just to speed things up a little bit. And it's uh, number of rows times number of columns. That's, that's about 3 million um, uh, pixels. I hope we process those in about half an hour. And um, these are just um, uh, coordinates, coordinate, uh, coordinates of this Albus projected coordinate system. So instead of lat long, we have these weird numbers here in, in meters. Um, minus 999 means no data. 
And these are simply ocean cells in the upper left corner. So the data cells come somewhere later. Good, so we're going to use this. I'm going to make a copy of this and put it here. And we're going to use it with R. We start R. I like to start R by uh, just double clicking an empty working directory that sets my working directory to this location so we don't have to worry about uh, paths, programming the paths. So let's get started with R. So this is my script window here. Um, these are just some commands that I tend to forget and uh, the libraries that we're going to use. So one is called STM tools um, that allows us to handle the ASCII files and then foreign is another, another uh, data compatibility library that allows us to uh, read um, uh, DBF files that are used by ArcGIS. So let's execute those two. Uh, this one as well. You can always see on the left here, instead of um, hitting return to go to the next line, I'm just hitting control R and that executes the line and brings it over here. And now let's simply read a uh, this this elevation file here and I have a little reminder how this is, looks like. Just copy this over here, calling this table one. Uh, it's ASCII to data frame is the function and it simply reads an ASCII file. So let's read this. I'm just going to copy the name over here. There we go. And let's execute this. All right. Uh, looks like success. And we can just have a quick look at this. Head of table one. So we have our coordinates now and um, uh, the elevation variable. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, it converted the uh, ASCII file that was just a, just a big matrix of uh, elevation variables by reading the header and then coming up with those XY coordinates and a single elevation observation for this XY coordinate. Uh, and that's exactly what our, uh, what our climate uh, generating program reads, except it would need let long coordinates. So that's our next task to uh, create this. But before that, I'm going to do one more thing uh, because the uh, the variable one here that uh, SRE doesn't doesn't like those kind of variable names. I'm just going to fix this. And we're calling this elevation. Okay. So if we look at this again, now it's called elevation. Good. We're actually done here in R, and we're just going to uh, export this table with the right CSV command. Table one. Oh, I don't think we need the quotation marks here. And um, now we have to specify the file name. Just call it table one CSV. It's going to be a comma separated values file. And yeah, we have to. Um, specify a few options. So one is that we don't want row names. Row names equals false. And we also don't want quotes. Um, and these are just special options so that ArcGIS uh, reads the table, uh, can read the table properly. So let's just execute this one. Okay, and we are done with this. Um, now the next thing we are going to do is convert these uh, y and x uh, coordinates of the projected system into a latitude and longitude uh, value. So we need those latitude and longitude values uh, for our climate software to work. OK, 
Okay, so let's uh, <clears throat> minimize this. And you see we actually created this table one uh, here. Why don't I copy this also over to our GIS stuff folder. There it is. Um, Arc can read this, so let's bring back the uh, ArcGIS here. And what we'll do is we use this tool here, add XY data. I'm going to navigate to the table one. It automatically identifies X and Y. And we have to actually tell it what coordinate system we are using. Um, so we're going to import this. It's the same as those two that we already used. There we go. OK. All right. Fine, whatever that was. <clears throat> so we don't we don't need to look at this. We just need the data here. Um, <clears throat> now, what we want is this in um, uh, in a geographic projection, and we just go to properties here and change this to a predefined geographic system uh, for the world is fine. And we're using uh, WGS 1984. That's a standard. Uh, all the rest is just historical stuff. Don't worry about this. Uh, so hit OK. Uh, don't worry about this either. Do you wish? Yeah. Uh, that didn't do it very well. But you can see it's uh, geographically projected now. So ArcGIS can do this on the fly. And uh, so the trick now that we apply is we're going to just save this data. We're going to export this in the same coordinate system as a data frame. And uh, let's call this one table two. And uh, yeah, I guess this also takes a moment. I'm just pause the recording here for a second so you don't have to wait for this. Okay, so it's done and it asks us if we want to add this and we say yes. Uh, we don't need this one anymore. So let's just have a look at this. Builds a little faster than the old one, but it's really nothing different. Um, so what that is is simply the same file that we previously had in R, we now have in ArcGIS. And we have it projected correctly. Uh, so now we can simply use a, a tool called, uh, for, I always forget this, let's search for add x, y. Okay, there it is, add x, y coordinates. Let's execute this. And don't have many choices here. And we hit OK. I pause this video again. Uh, this will also take a moment on my old laptop here. OK, you can see it's done. Uh, we can close this here. And now if we look at our coordinate, uh, on our attribute table, uh, we have both the projected coordinates and also the longitude and latitude here. So this is what we want. This is what we need to uh, process this into climate data. So let's, uh, we can simply close this up. Just gonna minimize this. And uh, let's see where did our data set go. There it is. So this is the uh, data set where that was created. And I'm gonna just clean this up. We don't. We only need the attribute table, so all the rest we're going to put in the recycling bin. Okay, so now the next step is to bring uh, table two back into R, um, and I just minimize this so we can just keep working here. Uh, <clears throat> and we just read DBF table two. That should hopefully work. And we obviously have to specify a name here. Uh, okay, let's see what's going on. 
Okay, I forgot the extension. Yeah. That's better. Okay, and we can look at this again. Uh, look at the header of table two. And you can see now we graduated from having just the IBIS coordinate to the other ones as well. Now, that's not quite the uh, order in which we need this for our climate software. So the, we need two ID fields. So th that actually comes in handy here because we do want to keep the X and Y coordinates uh, on our list. But then we need lat long elevation. And right now we have elevation that's long and that's lat. So let's create a table three that fixes this. Table two. And uh, so we're just giving the order of the columns here, which should be one, two, five, four, three. Probably a better way to do this, but anyways, let's see if it works. Head of table three. Good, that did the trick. So we can, <clears throat> I mean, it's not necessary, but I like to fix the variable names here. So I'm calling this lot and long and we're going to export this again. Let's copy this here. Now we're dealing with table three, three, run. Okay, so again, we are done with R. I'm just gonna minimize this and you see, uh, now we have our table three here. And that's a good input data file for, um, for our climate software. So I'm just going to copy this over here and uh, let's start this so we can determine what kind of variables we want to generate annual, monthly, seasonal, all variables. I'm just going to do the annuals just to make this a little quicker. Um, and here's the time period. Uh, future periods, there's a whole um, bunch of future models, uh, the CMAP3 multi-model data set, um, normal data, the different climate normal periods, um, data for different decades, data for different years, but we just want to start with a representation of current climate and um, or climate prior to a warming signal and the 61 to 90 is actually a good uh, default data set for that. Good, so these two we have to select and then we uh, use our input file, table three. And uh, we have to specify an output file. Oops, I should bring this a little down here. And it comes up with a suggestion. I'm just uh, accepting this, except I'm going to call this one table four. So we know the sequence in which this all happened, and we just say calculate and um, uh, wait for this to finish. And again, on my crappy old laptop, that probably takes half an hour for uh, 3 million points. So I'm going to pause this video again. And I can show you, actually, it appears here, and you can see it growing through 333 kilobyte, let's see. Uh, so now it's already 7.51, so it'll take about half an hour. Okay, looks like it's done. And uh, we'll do this for another period as well, for fun. Let's pick, a, I think, the E2, the last one here, that's a fairly pessimistic one, just so we can visually see the difference. So same procedure, we take the input file, specify an output file, so it'll give us the exact name of that automatically in the output file. And uh, 
run this again and I'm going to pause this again <clears throat> okay so this one's also done now we have two files for the current and for the future and uh, so the next step is we'll bring those into R again so let me copy those back into our root folder table 4 um, open R again and import those files table 4 CSV file name better copy this to do this without mistake and let's execute it I guess I forgot the bracket here let's execute that bracket as well that helps all right look at this head table four and uh, so now we have all kinds of uh, climate variables attached to our um, uh, initial coordinate variable so that's what we wanted and um, <clears throat> so now comes the beauty of this SDM tools you notice you know we never closed our um, so we, we are basically I just minimized it and it still knows with uh, what ASCII file we are working so in case you closed R you would have to uh, run these run this first line again to remind R uh, what's the reference um, ASCII grid but really all we have to do now in order to get our um, outputs is the reverse command here so I'm just gonna copy and paste this here uh, data frame to ASCII in this case of table 4 and um, because it's multiple files so all these all these columns here will be converted into separate ASCII files um, I'm going to make a new directory here and this is um, my command here what it means is we paste together the working directory get working directory and a directory of our choice I'm just going to going to call this current for current climate and obviously we have to create this here all right uh, we don't actually need all the columns and all the variables in this table so I'm just going to cut this back a little bit uh, using the same command here so what we need is the first two um, columns for the xy coordinates but then the climate variables start at column 6 and go to column 25 um, so let's see if that works and let's have a look at the header Now we just have the X and Y uh, coordinates and then followed by the climate variable. So what the last step here does is create from all the subsequent variables, it creates separate ASCII rasters for all those climate variables that we have here. Good. You can actually probably see those. Let's minimize this and there's our first one mean annual temperature there's a second one that just appeared mean warmest month temperature I'm gonna pause this again so you don't have to wait for this <clears throat> okay so there are all our variables and um, I'm just gonna make a second folder for the future oh, this future and so we're gonna do this based on this file here I'm just gonna copy the file name up and uh, I'm going to just recycle that code so I'm just going to change the file name here put uh, future here and run this again
There we go. <clears throat> okay, so we have filled this one, the future also up with our predicted climate surfaces. And um, so I think we're done. We could look at those. I should uh, just mention one thing, you know, if you do this all by hand, you're just as you've seen an error. Um, so one thing you can do is just uh, put this in a loop. That's what my students do. So if you're serious about this, you'll just uh, put this in a little for loop, this whole thing. You read all the file names, so all these here, um, uh, you, would, you would read in a list A, and then you do a for loop for name in A, and then we just call this name. You can just do it like this. There we go, that should do it. Um, and here, we just put name as well. And you obviously have to create the directories, but that way you can cycle through hundreds of scenarios if you want and uh, create climate data for all those uh, scenarios. So you just, with this little piece of code, you just walk away from your computer, come back, come back the day after or two, and you have a hard drive full of climate data. So these are the secrets uh, to productivity in our lab. Now, um, the last thing I want to do is look at the climate data. And maybe I'll start with our current climate. I'm going to bring in mean annual temperature and mean annual precipitation. Uh, so there's ARC. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to drag this over here. Um, going to call this current and we're going to do the same for the future drag those two in here and I'm going to give this a color legend um, mean annual precipitation <clears throat> yeah. it's a bit of clicking around here okay there we go and then we do the same for the future one. I don't know why it asked me all these questions. I agree. Okay. So that's a map of our mean annual temperature at the moment. And if we check this one, that's predicted for the 2080. So that, that is a big change. I wouldn't need to worry about this not being <laughs> visible actually let's see what uh, what that <clears throat> what that means in terms of values uh, so let's query a location here that seems kind of drastic um, so mean annual temperature from 13 to 19 so that that's a lot um, it's probably one of the more pessimistic models 8 to 12, 4 degrees, so this is more typically what's being projected. And we can do the same for precipitation. So let's uncheck this. That's our precipitation map at the moment and predict it. And yeah, it's getting a lot more dry here. It looks more wetter over here. We can take this back again. Yeah. Bit of a redistribution of precipitation toward the north and let's use our query tool again <clears throat> so up here it goes from 700 to 770 so plus 10 percent and down here it goes from 430 to 305 so that's kind of a drastic uh, decrease in precipitation so that looks good 
or I should say that looks really bad so we, we've better hope that these guys are wrong so that's it so you could use these surfaces now for species distribution modeling or you were whatever is on your agenda